Okay, so you arrive at a canal, and for me there's two types of canals. There's ones where there's not many features that are perceptible, so you're not you haven't got many bridges, you haven't got many lock gates, it's just an open stretch of canal. Um, my top tip for that sort of situation would be just to work the lure along the edge. That's 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 really going to give you the edge in those kind of situations, uh, if you pardon the pun. Um, to just start casting right along the edge and just work the lures down from you know both sides and then try the far edge. Perch, uh, they're, they're a predatory species, so they're always going to look for cover to ambush uh, their prey. So any, any prey that's going to be coming in towards the edge or swimming past that um, close edge or, or, the, or the edge that's farther away. That's where the perch are going to be uh, lying in wait. Um, a lot of perch, a lot of canals I should say, that they have an undercut uh, bank. So a lot of these perch will be hiding in, the, in those banks where there, there is a lot of features, you know, there's a lot of debris there, there might be rocks, um, reed beds, that sort of thing. So don't, you know, don't never neglect the edge. So when I'm fishing along the edge, it, it doesn't mean necessarily I'm going to catch you know, a lot of smaller fish. Uh, there, you know, I've had bigger fish out of the edge as well. You know, if, if there isn't any other features, the perch will use that uh, that edge and the undercut bank uh, to hide out. So whether it be smaller fish or big fish, you know, just be prepared for some action uh, along the edge and, and be prepared for a lot of fun. Um, and when you get to canals where there there are features like you know bridges, lock gates. Those are your first areas to try. In my experience, you know, always goes for the uh, always go for those kind of areas because that's where a lot of the fish are, are likely to be sort of gathering. Um, there's a lot of shade there for them, especially on the brighter days. Um, a lot of canals along bridges are, to tend to be quite deep, to, you know, to, the, to allow the for the boats. Um, so a lot of perch like that sort of deep water. Uh, so they will they will hide along the, uh, those bridges and you know never neglect those. Just always try and go for those sort of areas to give your chance, uh, yourself the best chance of, of catching a few good fish. Running water. If you ever see running water along a canal, always head for that as as a you know as a first port of port of call really. Whether it's you know along bridges where the lock gates sort of meet and there's water flowing out of those. Uh, always tend to go for those areas as well, These, they're, they're prime locations. A lot of water movement uh, stirs up the water in the canal. That attracts the, the prey fish, uh, so they see a lot of debris sort of floating, uh, floating around and, and um, you know, insects get dragged up along the lock gates. That would, it's, it's a food chain, so you get the, uh, the predators, they're going to be hanging about, you know, right in where the wa water is uh, is moving and then a little bit further away from that you know you might get the bigger uh, the bigger fish are sort of hanging about waiting for those smaller fish to come in uh, and waiting for your lure to uh, you know to be in the water to catch them and just to recap on those tips try your edges so that's your close your nearest bank to yourself uh, cast a bit further out to the far bank so that's your banks um, try your bridges try your lock gates uh, and try any water where you see the, wa the water is actually moving or stirring the bottom or you know, stirring the edge, uh, whether it be canal lock gates or whether it be overflow systems on your canal network. Um, you know, these, these are all prime locations. If, you, if you're struggling to find where the fish are at any, any particular point, that's, the, that's where you should be heading. This time of year, when the weather's a bit colder, the prey fish start to show up, and the perch start doing the same and following the prey fish. So to maximise your chances, you need to start covering a bit more water. So the, one of the techniques that I use to do this would just be to work along the edge and just literally to walk your lure ac across your close margin. So you don't have to cast far for this. You're literally just dropping it along the edge and you're working your lure Slowly to start, but you'll see if the perch are responding to a faster movement or if they like it, you know, slow and steady. And I just literally just jig the lure and just walk. And as I mentioned, a lot of the banks are undercut. So what you tend to find is the perch are hiding under there. And you just have to walk and just try and find them. And a good tip for doing this is when you cast out or when you drop your lure, it's just to stand back a little bit further from the bank so you're not showing too much of your rod tip. Especially on a clear water like this, you know, the fish can see right up and you don't want to spook them before you even get a chance to put your lure in front of them. So just keep that rod tip back 
and just work it as close as you can to the edge. A lot of the times when you're fishing the edge, because you're fishing a short line, the bites can be really savage, just like this. So don't forget just to be prepared for that bite and set the hook the moment you feel that take. That's a nice little perch. Let's see if we can get a few more. As with any lure fishing situation, whether you're targeting big pike or small perch like we're doing today, you need the right balanced tackle. What I mean by that, you need tackle that's going to let you enjoy your fishing, as well as maximise your bite indication and allow you to carry it for however many hours you're fishing. You want to be comfortable carrying the stuff, you want to be able to feel the bites and you want to enjoy your fishing at the end of the day. So I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm using today. For the rod choice, I've gone with the prism range of rods in the light spin, which is the lightest one in that range. It's a two to eight gram rod. Fantastic action, fast tip. It's really gonna let me feel the bites, even if they're very shy. And I'm doing a little bit of jigging today. I've balanced that out with a three gram jig head, teamed up with a micro fry in the perch pattern. And the reel of choice to go with that the smallest reel available in the prism range is the C1000. Fantastic reel of choice, very smooth. And on this reel, I've teamed that up with a low diameter jig silk. And that's really going to allow you to, to maximize your fishing, to cast further. And there's no point having a, a smaller reel, a very light rod, and having very thick braid on there that you, you're really not going to make the most out of your fishing situation. So everything has to flow, everything has to balance. And you can just see a setup like this is so light. You know, you can hold that with one, with one finger. I don't recommend you do, especially if you're fishing for big perch. Hold on to that tight and enjoy your fishing. Another great tip I can give you is to vary the style of lure you're using and the technique. And most of the time, like today, I started off using a jig and worked that along the edge and just found the features. But now I'm switching to the crankbaits. So I've now switched from the jig to using the Salmo Hornet 3. And this is going to give me a different presentation from the jig fishing. So a lot of the times you fish for perch and you expect them to be on the bottom. So you're using the jig to get that bait right to the bottom and then just to give them the action so the fish will come up for that and you get your take. But on some days, the fish are up in the water and to give them that different presentation, the crankbaits will work wonderful for that job. So you cast in your crankbait, it's gonna hit the surface and you can work that down to the depth that you want on the, on the canal depending on the, on, on the crankbait that you're using. And that way you're giving some, the fish something different. So you cast your crankbait, and again with that, you work it on a retrieve and pause. Allow that crankbait to come up in the water, and then just work it down. And again, with the techniques, you can work that, cast that towards the edge and work it down. Again, pause and retrieve, pause and retrieve. And you get followed by a perch, just like the one it's doing now. He's given up, but I'm sure the others won't. 
On some days it really pays to be different and, and not to follow what everybody else is doing, especially on waters where, where there's a lot of pressure from anglers using soft plastics. It's really good to, to stand out, use something like a crankbait to give the perch a different presentation that they haven't seen before. And most of the times they will react to that and they will, you know, you'll, get, you'll catch yourself some fish, especially on a tough day where soft plastics might not be working. It always pays to be different. A very good tip for autumn and winter fishing, when the bites really start to become hard and the fish tend to shoal up, so you've got to really search for them, is to use a two-way approach that combines jig fishing and drop shot fishing. Jig fishing allows me to cover a lot of water, to be mobile, to, to fish quite fast and to cover an area, to cover the ground very fast. So at least I can locate the fish and get onto them straight away. But when the bites start to dry up a bit, when it becomes that bit more difficult and the fish tend to sort of sh shy from, from the jigs and from any sort of fishing activity, then I'll switch over to a drop shot method. And with that, it allows me to keep the bait into one, in one area and just to work it very slowly and to sort of entice the fish into biting. If they're not in the mood to chase the lures, and they're not in the mood to chase the jigs that you're presenting to them, then, then it's the time to try the drop shot. And that would hopefully pick you up a few more bites and get you a few more fish on a, on a tough cold day. And the way I would approach jig fishing is to cover the area quite quickly just to work out where the fish are hiding. What I do with that is to, cut, to fan out the area in front of me. Say if I'm standing here now, I've got this whole area it's like a semicircle right in front and what you do is start from the edge, always start from the edge and work your way around the area just to locate the fish. And once you've done that, once you've had a few bites, you've had a few fish, you find that eventually it would sort of tend to die out a little bit. So then you, you try the, the drop shot and where you would cast that is where you'd had your, the majority of your fish or where, you, where you've had a few bites that you know that the fish are going to be there but perhaps they're a little bit more shy now um, and they want that different presentation just to entice them into, uh, into biting again. So you'd cast that and you'd just slowly work the drop shot lure in that same position just to give them that, that different presentation.